And Africa's only female head of state, Amina Gurib Fakim, has resigned as president of the island nation of Mauritius. She is set to have used a credit card given to her by the Planet Earth Institute, PEI, in London to buy jewelry and clothes abroad. Ms. Gurib Fakim's office, however, said that she had an identical credit card from the same bank and mistakenly used the card from the PEI for expenses not linked to her mission. She was reportedly, or rather has reportedly, refunded the $27,000. Eurip Fakim was accused of using a credit card issued by an international non-governmental organization to buy clothes and jewelry. The chemistry professor appointed to the largely ceremonial post in 2015 as the island nation's first female president has denied any wrongdoing, saying she has refunded all the money in question. She violated the constitution, there's no argument about it. And as such, she had to resign or else she would have been sacked, impeached. And, uh, but even before that, uh, before that episode, there were accusations of gross misconduct leveled against her, first by the press, uh, which published uh, uh, documents, even, uh, documented evidence about that. And then the prime minister himself at a press conference argued that he had damning evidence against her. And as a, you know, in Mauritius, the president is a moral authority. And hence, uh, it was uh, inevitable, eh? because besides, the parliament in its majority, great majority, unanimously, all the parties in the opposition and the government had called for a resignation. The local low press newspaper reported that the president had shopped in Italy and Dubai using a credit card issued by Planet Earth Institute. The organization supports education by offering scholarships and the president served there as an unpaid director. The newspaper reported that the card was to promote a doctorate program named after the president. It is not a serious mistake. The card was given to her to use and not to keep. So she used it. She could have come forward to explain it, but I don't believe it was a reason for her to resign. She should not have used that card while still being the president of the republic. However, I do not think she should have resigned. The conclusions of a commission of inquiry should have been reported before the decision to resign is made. Mauritius Prime Minister Pravin Jognot had said that President Gurib Fakim would resign last week, but then just days after that announcement, the president backtracked, saying she would not resign before her lawyer told reporters that she would eventually step down after all. Well, we can't forgive her, because in the past there have been more serious issues and the offenders are still in their post. I do not think that she did something really serious. She did not use the government's money. Mauritius markets itself as a bridge between Africa and Asia. Its economy relies on sugar, textiles and tourism, but it is trying to develop new sectors like offshore banking, business outsourcing and luxury real estate. Let's go over to South Africa where President Cyril Ramaphosa says the government will continue to pay the legal fees of the scandal hit former President Jacob Zuma. He says an agreement had been struck to continue the payment until a court finds out if Zuma had acted in his personal capacity rather than as head of state. The deal also requires his predecessor to repay the money if he's found personally culpable of the charges. According to main opposition party Democratic Alliance, the state has so far spent $1.2 million in Zuma's legal fees. The former president, who resigned last month after intense pressure, faces 18 charges of corruption related to a government arms deal in the late 1990s. The charges had been dropped in 2009, just before we became president, but there were recently, they were recently reinstated by the National Prosecuting Authority. In Better Debia, our channel's television South Africa bureau chief joins us now. Good to have you again on the program. President Ramaphosa says that government will continue to fund legal fees of former President Jacob Zuma. What do you make of this pledge from the South African government? Well, he didn't just say it, you know, um, he, his own opinion, but according to him, because he's been responding to some of the comments by the opposition party members, uh, it's according to a deal signed in 2006 and 2008 in accordance with what they call the uh, Section 3 of the State Attorneys Act and the Treasury Regulations, that since he was a public officer, 
when the crimes he allegedly committed, you know, happened, that uh, the, the state will be paying. But the caveat in that deal, which he said to have made available to the opposition party members who demanded, is that uh, uh, if he um, loses, he will pay his fee. Uh, but the president says, look, it's of, he considered it of public import, so he will not go against that deal that was signed at the time, except a court ruled otherwise. And of course, uh, the, the opposition parties are headed that way now.